Rockdale Junior School is in the heart of a small town called Osset in West Yorkshire. It's a, a close-knit community of families who are working class, professional. It's a community that pull together. There's a lot of energy in the school. I think that's generated with the creativity that permeates every single corner of every single classroom. It's having a staff who have a very creative outlook on life. That's what helps the staff to plan lessons that just go that little bit further in terms of inspiring the children and tapping into their imagination. Since we've developed the school garden, we've just realised what a fantastic potential that has. Suddenly we've got this absolutely fantastic resource as a teaching tool. We've got all sorts of different habitats for different creepy crawlies. We've got lots and lots of work that we can do on plant science. So there's just so, so much potential for, for learning out there. It's lovely. How long did it take? The chicks arrived on the 16th of June. Holly. It was three weeks, yeah. Morning, Mrs Twiddy. Morning, Sandy. I've got this from Mrs Rispin. Uh, she said, would you open it straight away? There's a note here, and look who it's from. Why would the police be contacting our school? And there's another letter as well. I'll just look at this one first. Dear Mrs Twiddy and 3JT, I hope you don't mind the action I have taken, but I was very concerned by what I saw when I visited the garden yesterday. Today is going to kick off uh, a practical investigation into what mini beasts do. So the context will be um, that there has been certain kinds of vandalism going on in the school garden and they need to find out who the, the culprits are. So just sort of giving them that sort of real context should spark their imagination. Yes, you have to get the basics right. They have to know how to add up. Spell, read, write, but once they can do them and you can find a real context to put those skills in, it just makes the learning so much more meaningful. Right, guys, we have a lot to do this morning. I think it's time that we got out into our garden and found out what's going on. Action. We had an emergency call that Southdale Junior School garden was being vandalised. When I arrived at the scene, it was total devastation. We've got some of the scene of crime photographs that the police have left us behind, yeah? What do we need to do to find out who committed these crimes, Maddie? We, we, we can look for, like, footprints in the soil. We certainly could look for footprints. Who do you think? The suspect might be, if it's not people. Maybe bugs which like in, eating strawberries instead of carrots. We've got these special things called a pooter. A pooter. I've never used a pooter before, but James has. He used one yesterday. And if we find some suspects, we're going to use the pooters to hoover them up. So, James, will you show us what to do? So you suck the one with the block on the bottom. Yeah. You don't suck the other one because you don't want these suspects in your mouth, really, do you? <laughs> no. Whoa. Whoa! That was cool. Well done. We have our first suspect. <laughs> now, what we need to do is very, very carefully have a look and see if there are any other suspects that we can find in our garden. Well, you suck through this and you put that because I've got one there. Oh my god, that is gross. I'm looking at one. Yeah, if I had a strawberry with wood lights in it, and I don't think they've been eating it. We thought I saw the bin. We were very near to catching the crime. If we find the crime, then criminal, then we may be able to do our cafe and that will be good. This leaf has got lots of goo on. <coughs> Someone or something has been wrecking our garden. Look, holes in our rhubarb. What a lovely leaf that would be without holes. And that is an ant. 
were making food from the garden and they've nearly all gone anyway, so it may be that we had to cancel the cafe. You have been doing some research, haven't you? What did you do? We were looking. Uh, we picked some leaves that looked um, weird. What looked weird about them? They were, they were all, like, they were all gooey like... and stuff like and that. They were, yeah. they were, some of them were moving. So you knew there was something on the leaf? Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you find out what the something was? Yeah, there was aphids yeah. and there was right. caterpillar. How do you know? Where did you find out that they were aphids? We had a look on the VLE to, and, and we saw a picture of like them. Did you do the pest we went... identifier on the VLE? Yeah. And was that yeah. what told you it was an aphid? Yeah. 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 We've got lots and lots of suspects here. What you need to do is make sure that you've all got a picture of some of the suspects. Because the next thing we're going to have to do is fill out our crime reports. Dun, dun, dun. We have had to fill the sheet in. Crime scene. Clues. Suspects. Now I've got a full chart of the suspects to show you. Did you ever know there were so much animals in this world? Stop filming! Tell me anything that you found out this morning or anything you've discovered this morning. Faye? I opened the book hotel and I put my hand in. I found this big slug and so I picked it up and I put it in the tub. You're braver than me, Faye, because I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have gone anywhere near that without a big pair of rubber gloves. We maximise on every area of the school grounds because we know it enhances the education in the classroom. So having a pond, I know that digging this pond has enhanced so many other areas of the curriculum. The maths work, the ICT work, English, the communication work. How far? Is that, is that two metres? Yeah. And it's all generated from something as simple as let's dig a hole and, and have a pond. Look, oh, it's a turd. It's oh. not a turd, that's a frog. Wow. From the day. Yes. We currently got a year four class and we're looking very much at our habitat work, focusing on our science work and looking at all the different ways that we can um, build in other subjects into the science work. So the children have very much um, put their own emphasis on the way that they want to direct their own learning. We've focused our science on frogs and that stemmed from um, children bringing in frogs into the classroom. Yesterday morning, when some of you were busy digging away at the pond, I've received a letter. Now, it's headed with Save the Frog campaign. Dear 4RS, we are writing to you because we're aware that your class is digging a pond in your playground and we would like your help in our Save the Frog campaign. Today, we're going to use the research and everything that they've been learning and put that into either drawing posters, doing a report themselves, writing a report, and using the video camera, filming and interviewing each other. We do like to give the children um, skills where they can bring in all the different areas of the curriculum. Fantastic. Hello, this is Jacob Scott reporting from Southdale Junior School in Osset. Now we go to Rosie. Tell us a frog fact. Well, frogs eat slugs and slugs wreck people's gardens if they're growing plants. So we need to save the frogs so they eat the slugs. Um, that was good from Rosie. Now we go to William Bub. Can you tell us a fact, please? By not putting pesticide on the farms and where they live. That was very good facts and way to save frogs from two pupils. Over and out. Are we all happy with what we are doing about with the newspaper article? Yes, about how we've got to be persuasive. Frogs are dying out. We need to save them. Farms are spraying pesticides all over the crops to get rid of the insects, animals that are eating their crops. We need frogs because they are important in medical research and the world will be covered in flies. There are 5,576 different types of frogs. Behind us we have 
have two pupils from Southdale School. It's really good because we get to um, have experience for making things and also look, look at the insects around the pond and also we're having good fun filming this. So. We're learning quite a lot. When you're reading books you're, and you, you just get bored of it sometimes but then when you go, when the like, first time you're going out and actually doing it, um, it's a lot more better to do. I think being outside just teaches us a lot because when we're young we don't think much of it and we just think it's just another area of space. But now as we get older we actually realise what the outdoors meant for and um, to enjoy things. Just getting outside and doing it, what if you've been planning it, it's just a really great. When I first started teaching all those years ago, I won't say how many, um, it was a very much topic-based approach where you actually sort of decided on your topic and drew in all sorts of different areas of the curriculum. And this cafe project that we've been doing now has allowed me to do that. I think the standards of what the children are doing now are just so much higher, that it's so much clearer what your learning objectives are and the areas that you want to cover and just embrace by doing this kind of project. We have seen um, because we're the, having um, a free JT cafe and tonight at Quarter to three till yeah. four. And um, we do it so parents because parents get quite bored and hungry and miserable when yeah, they're trying to pick us up. And they're it's our free JT project to make it um, all our lessons a bit funner. And when and we do a lot of handwriting about it, and we've done invitations and, and posters. And all we've made all the menus. We've done lots and lots of maths, actually working out how much the ingredients that we've bought have cost, um, working out how much we should charge for each individual cake and how much profit we're going to make. There's just been so much work that they've been really, really fired up to do. Difficult work, very, very challenging work, and yet they've all been really engaged in it because it was for a real purpose. <laughs> dynamic and the more creative the curriculum is, the more they're going to get out of it. Because I always say that happy children make progress. 